Hello. Hi, how are you? Good, Elizabeth, how are you? I'm good, Dr. Shikandre. Oh my goodness, the last time we spoke, uh, you were on the podcast and we talked about um, sex and sex being painful for IC. So I'm like super excited to connect with you again and talk about IC. Oh my gosh, me too. I just want to introduce everybody. So I am Dr. Allison Triconde. I am the co-founder of Pelvic Rehabilitation Medicine. And I'm super excited to be doing an Instagram Live here with Elizabeth Yeutani. Uh, she's fantastic. She's just an amazing, amazing uh, wealth of knowledge, a patient advocate, a uh, successful author, a podcast uh, writer and, um, and producer, just so much, uh, so much to talk about. But um, this is really exciting to be able to follow up with you again and see how everything's, uh, how everything's uh, doing with you. Oh my gosh, I am excited to talk about it because, you know, we had a specific talk topic when you came on the podcast, but I kind of want to learn. I mean, I'm excited to hear you talk too and hear a little bit about, you know, I love learning and I'm, I feel like you know, with interstitial cystitis, I'm always learning. I'm always, you know, researching and looking because information is changing. And, um, you know, I'm seeing more people come into this field. And so I am excited to hear what you have to say today as well. Amazing, amazing. So let's just open up, I think, uh, with everybody. Just let, tell me a little bit about your journey with uh, IC as a patient. I think that's a great place to start. Um, yeah, of course. So back in January of 2006, I got a uh, UTI and got the antibiotics took all of them. And then two weeks later, um, it, it felt like my UTI came back, but with a vengeance. And so I went back to my doctor and, you know, mm -hmm. she comes in and she says, Hey, it's, it's negative And you know, you don't have one. So I'm going to refer you to urology. And I was super confused. And at the time, I mean, you're talking about, you know, 2006, there wasn't a ton of information like there is today. So, uh, the urologist that I got referred to just happened to have been, he was on a IC research team, I think out of UCSD. And so he knew immediately, he was like, okay. So we did, uh, he did hydrodistension with cystoscopy and uh, came back and, and I'm sitting in his office and he's showing me, you know, the pictures of my bladder and he's like, uh, you know, you've got a bunch of, you know, hemorrhages or tears. Um, and I would put your IC at moderate to severe. And I remember, you know, you feel like time freezes. I don't know. I, re I just remember staring at the pictures, trying to understand what he was saying to me. And he, you know, he, he gave me a life sentence. He was like, this is it. Here's your options. You can do some pain meds and, or you can do bladder insulations. And I just walked away crushed because I was in significant pain. I, it was, for me, the IC was debilitating. I lived with, now looking back, what was a constant flare for a decade. And so even though I, you know, I did uh, pain management, you know, I was kind of putting this Band-Aid on it uh, for 10 years, um, I didn't get better, okay. like a worse. And, you know, the what started as, bladder pain um, morphed into, you know, brain fog and back pain, back pain that was so severe. I, there were times where I couldn't walk. Um, I developed sometimes my, if my IC was really bad, uh, pain running down my legs. So I would walk with like a limp sometimes. Um, chronic fatigue. Uh, oh my gosh. There were so many things. I mean, I started getting rashes and hives and I mean, it was just, it was, it was brutal. And, you know, I, I, I tried heparin, I tried uh, DMSO treatments, I did DMSO for a couple of years. But I didn't get better. I, I got worse. And, you know, if I had a flare up, uh, I would take Vicodin. And that would maybe cut the, the pain in half. 
And so you just go into like days of not sleeping. And I mean, flare ups can last, at least for me, they would last upwards of 10 days. And you're not sleeping. I remember just wanting to hit my head against a wall. Like I, I, I felt so you get so tired of days of not sleeping and you lose your appetite. And it's, um, oh my gosh, I see is, is horrible. And, and, and having gone through all of this, it created inside of me a passion for this community <laughs> because it is exhausting and it's discouraging. And, um, I, I can look back now and say, hey, there's there's so much we've learned along the way. And I, you know, when I got diagnosed, I remember him telling me, like, this is, you know, this is it. This is your life now. There's no cure. This is it. And there was something inside of me, this, this little rebellious attitude that I sometimes have. <laughs> it came out at the right moment. I love it. <laughs> And I'm like, no, <laughs> I don't accept that. I, I will exhaust myself. I have to, I, I was already asking all the way back then. Well, why do I have this? What cause, what's causing the dysfunction? What happened? How did I get here? What's going on? If I can figure that out, potentially I can address it. And that mindset, even though I went into like a guinea pig phase of testing so many different things, that is what led me to where I am now is that of like, I was just relentless. I wouldn't give up. I, I, when you're in that much pain, um, I just, I didn't want to live my whole life like that. So, um, yeah, I was able to figure some stuff out and we can, we can talk about that. Well, good for you. I mean, you're a strong person and good for you for being your own self advocate. It's that's amazing. This is like it's really it's it's very impressive. And this is why we want to share this story with everybody. So, you know, everyone can be their self advocate if they need to. Um, and so so now let's talk about some of kind of the uh, lifestyle uh, behavior modification changes that you find have helped you or any treatment you've done. Uh, that has helped you feel better? Okay, so I want to back up for like a minute and say that at like year 10, I happened, I don't know how, but I happened to come across a documentary called uh, Betrayal, the Autoimmune disease solution they aren't telling you. I want to say like it was uh, Tom O'Brien that put it out, but I got... The doctors that were on this, uh, involved in this documentary were doctors, uh, Mark Hyman, Amy, uh, uh, Dr. Amy Myers, Jill Carnahan. Um, there was a bunch of them. And all of a sudden, my, I don't know, it, my mind, it was like everything that I was scrambling to try to like get and understand, it all of a sudden started to make sense. And so I, I ordered Dr. Amy Myers' book, The Autoimmune Solution. Yes. And she, do you know her? She's phenomenal. Um, phenomenal. Oh yes. Love her. I'm so glad that you're a fan. Uh, so she talks about uh, autoimmunity. And, and I, in that process, I realized, I came across some information where IC was listed as an autoimmune condition. Now, not a disease, but a condition. And she presents this, you know, uh, uh, autoimmune spectrum where the more symptoms that you have, the more... Um, yeah, the more symptoms that you have, the higher you are on that spectrum moving towards an autoimmune disease. So I had, I was high on that spectrum. I mean, I had so much going on with my body that I thought, okay, if I take what she's saying and I implement it, maybe, just maybe, we'll, you know, something will happen. Like I'll figure something out and I'll feel better. And so she was talking about, or she talks about all the time, inflammation and what drives inflammation in the body. Mm -hmm. And so it's, you know, her five things are uh, food, stress, toxins, infections, and leaky gut. And I got in and I began to address all of that and saw significant changes in my body. Um, of course, you it has to be you know, customized for interstitial cystitis because we've got this pelvic pain, you know, uh, 
thing going on or if if you've got bladder issues going on it can it can depend so it has to be individualized the diet has to be individualized oh my gosh that diet let me tell you <laughs> i, I want to say that the diet is probably the most uh i don't know like it, it's it's a little complex it's a little hard to figure out um but yeah i got it into that so the lifestyle changes that i made um I started with the detox. I uh, supported my liver and started detoxifying. I got all the toxins out of the house. So beauty products, chemicals. Uh, it's interesting. If you don't mind, I'm going to like share this really quick story. I sh I sh I've shared it a number of times, but um, when I started to heal, uh, you know, when you're in a constant flare, it's very difficult to figure out where is that coming from? What did I do? You know, you're in, you're in all the time. So it's really hard. You can, you know, eat something three days ago and it's, you know, three days later and you're not going to remember what you ate, you know, three days ago that might have set off your flare. So uh, as things began to die down, I was taking a shower one evening and I had been using a Bath and Body Works uh, wash mm -hmm. um, yeah. for 10 years for longer than I had had my IC and it caused that night I caught it. It caused what felt like a UTI. And I was like, Hmm, that was my first time of like, Hmm, well, that's weird. So I, you know, a few days later I tried my body wash again, same thing, like severe UTI. And then it would go away by like the next morning. So that was kind of like my indication that like there might be for me personally, um, some chemical sensitivity going on. Mm -hmm. So tossed out, like got everything, everything in my house is clean, detergents, soaps. I check everything with like the EWG. Um, and uh, so, so did that, like changed my diet. Um, infections. So infections have to be addressed. And I think that like running a GI map, is a really great test. It's a comprehensive stool test to look at your gut and see what's going on. Um, because we, when we go infections, we can think, oh, infections in the bladder, which there can be. Um, but there can also be infections in the gut, which will, the, the um, microbiome or the microbiota of the gut can influence the bladder. So wanting to make sure that everything's healthy and in balance and balanced uh, so yeah, so I worked on my gut, got rid of the infections. I did, um, do a microgen DX, uh, test and look at infections there. Started sleeping. Oh my goodness. I cannot tell you sleep was huge because I had gone 10 years not sleeping. And then I started sleeping. And when I started sleeping, I, I rearranged my schedule and I started sleeping 12 hours a day. For a month. It so were you about the night you weren't getting up to urinate because you were able to sleep? At that point. Yeah, I had gotten to that point where, where everything started to die down. I wasn't 100%, but everything started to die down and calm down with the diet changes, with the, you know, toxins and detox and supplementation. Um, managing stress. Oh, my gosh. That is huge. Uh, huge, huge, huge. And... Um, yeah, so once everything started to die down, I started sleeping and it took about two, three weeks and I felt almost like my body like came back to life. It was crazy. Crazy. That's I love it. That's amazing. Yeah. Um and how long did that what was the how, how many how long did that process take? Because a lot of times it's educating and explaining to people, you know, it's a process, right? So for you <sighs> How long did that kind of take to start from when you were describing that severe, you know, super pubic, classic pelvic mm -hmm. pain, urine, frequency, pressure, everything people mm -hmm. would get to being able to sleep through the night, not getting up every couple hours and having less pain and discomfort? How long? Uh, okay. So I want to say to where I was like back up on my feet and, and running was probably about a year and a half. But it is a process. And I, and I think that's really important because every little bit that you're doing can have a tremendous impact on your health. And so 
I don't want to say like it was a year and a half until I was like really bad. And then I was completely fine. It was this process of like little bit by little bit, you know, the pain started to come down and down and down. And I started to feel like, okay, I can do more and move more and sleep more. Um, but probably from like the beginning of when I got that documentary until the point where I was like, this isn't a thing for me anymore was probably two years where I, because, because even, because even, even learning to manage your stress is a process. I mean, I had to, I had to yeah. get in and do some serious work. And so I, I really do believe in like meditation and breath work and yoga. I also really believe that getting support if you need it through counseling or a therapist, like is, is crucial because uh, I remember someone telling me that they had, looked at a study that people with IC tend to be a type personalities and, um, you know, perfectionists. And so learning to cope with stress, learning to change the way that I think or I process when I get stressed out or when I get overwhelmed, that's huge. And it doesn't come with one counseling session. You know, it's, it's a process that you have to go through to learn to shift the way that you think and the way that you cope with stress. And I think stress is so huge because for people with IC, if they get stressed out, it takes minutes, minutes for their IC to just flare up. And, and I mean, you know, you can speak to that, right? Like the, the pelvic floor, there's so many things, cortisol is getting released. There's so many things going on in the body. That's, that's stress is huge. It's yes, I, I would agree. It is en en enormous. Um, completely agree. Yeah, I mean, with stress, there is the effect on that yeah, access, right? The hypothalamic pituitary mm -hmm. adrenal access, which will affect, you know, like you had said, the cortisol release, which is a stress hormone, which kind of amplifies that whole central nervous system, autonomic nervous system response and kind of make flare even worse. And then also with stress, a lot of us, in addition to that, are we just we are going to that chronic guarding and holding patterns right in the in the pelvis, you know, we, some some patients, people hold it in their neck, others, really right. pelvis, and, and you start to subconsciously clench everything, you know, you're just squeezing the organ, the, the, mm -hmm. the, the muscles and doing that for a long time and never releasing causes a lot of um, inflammation really and decreased kind of blood flow that you know that neurogenic inflammation where it's they're not giving the the nerves that healthy blood flow that they need to not be irritated and, and inflamed because you're constantly squeezing it <laughs> everything yeah, mm -hmm. yeah abso absolutely perfectly said and you know the thing I would say about my journey that I would say is unfortunate is that um, you know, aside from my urologist, I wasn't sent in the direction of anybody else who could help me. So people mm. like yourself, that was never discussed. Um, and then towards the end of the 10 years, right before I, I kind of shifted gears and said, okay, I'm not going to put a bandaid on this anymore. Like I, I'm not doing anything. I'm, 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 you know, suppressing the symptoms and that's it. But now all these other things are showing up in the process of doing that. You know, we ran through all the meds that were available at the time, and my doctor said, well, you know, you could try PT, but your insurance plan isn't going to cover it, and I don't know if it'll do anything. And so I, that was my only little tiny, like, drop towards anyone offering anything else other than urology. Like, I just, I didn't know, you know, at that time, and... I called and there were like two options in San Diego, two options. And, um, they were like, yeah, your insurance isn't covered. It's expensive. And I'm like, well, is it going to help me? Like, what, what is this? What, <laughs> what's going on? And so now I look back and I think, oh my goodness. Oh my goodness. Did I need some help in that area? And how much faster would I have, you know, met that end goal of like reversing the symptoms had I had a little bit of extra help and support from the right team, mm -hmm. um,
unfortunately, I, I didn't have it. I didn't even have a doctor, uh, like a general, that knew anything about interstitial cystitis. Literally, like they were, there was, I didn't have anybody. What I had was, was, you know, a doctor and I moved it to an ND who were like, if I came in and said, Hey, can I, can I try this? I read this and they were super supportive and they're like, sure, sure, sure. We'll, you know, we'll give you that or we'll, here's a supplement or here's this. I had that, but I didn't have anybody leading me aside from Dr. Amy Meyer's book, which <laughs> is unfortunate. And it's why, you know, I, I've worked so hard to put out so much content and material and, and tried to connect within this community because I, gosh, I, it's heartbreaking to me, heartbreaking that these women are suffering and men are suffering the way that they are. And I had, um, you know, my last, my last flare up, I remember thinking no one should have to live like this no one should. It's, it's horrific, the pain that you're left in. And so I'm so thankful that we're seeing just this shift and this move, um, toward mm -hmm. expanding, you know, and, and bringing support to people. Oh, that's, that's amazing. I mean, how long were you suffering, uh, be before you kind of got an, a deeper understanding of what was going on? 10 years. 10 years, 10 years. Wow. 10 years. You wow. Know, go ahead. That's I'm um, just, wow. That's it's a long time. A long time. It's a long time to be in constant daily pain. Um, I, I remember partway through the journey, I was struggling to take care of my kids. I had three kids and I wanted to be so involved with them and, I was struggling. I was hiding my symptoms and hiding what was I was going through to make things as normal as I could for them. And I remember thinking, how am I ever going to take care of my grandkids? I mean, I'm, I'm in bad shape now. How, if I fast forward, am I ever going mm -hmm. to do and to travel, to move, to live, to work, to, you know, you know, contribute, be part of everything. And uh, I was reminded of that moment where I was crying, telling my daughter, how am I ever going to, how am I ever going to, it's bad as shape of what's it going to be like 10 years from now, 15 years from now. And I, you know, a couple of weeks ago when that memory came back, I was standing at the very top of like this, uh, you know, high playground with my grandkids. <laughs> and I'm thinking, oh my gosh, oh my great. gosh, oh my gosh, crazy. That is, that's great though. That's, Wow, what a story. And, and you are so brave. There's a comment. Uh, you are very brave to share. This is where change starts, is mm -hmm. what you're doing. I mean, we have to raise awareness, educate. I mean, from our perspective, from public rehabilitation medicine perspective, it's just a lot easier if we, you know, we get in sooner. Um, it's just so much easier to help uh, get patients on a path to healing if we just get them sooner. So, and this is where it starts, where patients start to know there's places you can go and people who can listen and help kind of get you a better understanding of what may potentially be causing your symptoms and then a, a treatment plan, right? To, to right. rehabilitate. Um, that, that's, that's great. I love it. Because that's, that's really correlates with our, at, at PRM, our thought processes too. Other, number one is really deep, getting a deeper dive as to what's going on because you know there is ic there's bladder pain syndrome sometimes it's coming from something gynecological that really causes the bladder symptoms sometimes something gi like you were mentioning can uh, there is a you know that cross sensitization if if there's issue with the gut so there's just so many different reasons that it could be going on so for, number one is try to get a deeper dive and figure out what is going on um, i do think it is imp important if you've had these symptoms describing of bladder urgency, frequency, pelvic pain with bladder filling, this pressure, super pubic pain um, for long periods of time to have your, your urologist take a look with, we call it a cystoscopy. It's a camera in the bladder because it does mm -hmm. help us, everybody, urologist, PRM, to decide what's going on, right? Are, there, are those lesions present or, or not? Sometimes they are, sometimes they aren't, but it really does change 
our management. Um, so that that's definitely is an important aspect to take a look and that, and then we can, you know, tailor, tailor our treatments based on, based on that finding. Um, but yeah, you need that kind of multimodal uh, approach or we're so lucky we have cognitive behavior, like behavioral health in house with mindfulness and, um, a lot of muscle relaxation techniques to that brain mind -body connection to kind of relax that pelvic floor and really teach that proper breathing that seems simple but it's actually it's not right so we need to repetitively kind of teach how to how to breathe and then um with work pelvic floor physical therapy and t treat that nerve muscle upregulation right because the bladder the bladder sits right on that the pelvic floor um so if your pelvic floor is in spasm all the time you're gonna your bladder is going to be constantly sitting on a spastic you know muscle and be irritated so that's and in addition to sitting that mechanical nature of sitting on that that, hyper, that spastic pelvic floor as there's that the the nerves to the to the bladder are going to complain for many reasons and just from that Public floor spasm, they'll have that neurogenic inflammation. But a lot of times, if there's IC in general and something else, got to be contributing. So, yeah, it's it's important. And then I agree, nutrition's huge. So we are in the process of bringing in um, integrative nutrition um, and health coach because we need it. Like we to get oh our patients. Oh my gosh, it all right. We need it desperately. So. Oh my gosh. So you know what, like with, so with the diet, um, low histamine, low oxalate tend to be what we see mostly like, you know, there seems to be this little issue. Um, there was a study done showing that people with IC tend to have uh, high amounts of histamine in their bladder. And then there's four receptors in the bladder. So histamine can be an issue. We're, we're curious to see where our research is going to go with oxalates. Um, people say they feel better on a low oxalate diet. Um, but I wanted to go back and, and mention that um, I do th like the, the, you know, when I, when I first got sick and it was, you know, okay, I had this UTI and then the UTI came back, go back like four, four, five years at the time, five years, maybe I had given birth to my daughter and that birth was mm -hmm. difficult. It was difficult. And from that point, I had had a couple times before I got IC where I actually ended up in the ER because my, I was, in, I was experiencing so much pelvic pain. And I think there's so much there with, you know, mobility. And also, you know, I wasn't my posture and the way I, I moved and, you know, putting more expectations on my pelvic region to kind of hold up instead of my glutes, just so much there that, um, I was missing. I didn't, I didn't know, you know, unfortunately, but I, you know, when I come across, um, pelvic rehabilitation center and, and, uh, our medicine and, you know, the other ones popping up, I'm like, for me, um, it just, I, I can't even explain what it does for me because I, I, I think like, oh my gosh, there's hope here right? There's hope. And we're getting, people are getting support and getting options that were not available, at least that I was aware of back in 2006. So I, oh my gosh, I love that people are talking about IC. I love that we're, we're um, coming together as a community and really trying to offer help and support and information and tools and resources to people who need it, to people who are suffering. And so what you're doing makes me so happy. <laughs> so happy. I love it. Oh, thank you. That's amazing. Same. What you're doing is, is, is fantastic and so brave. And so, and I, I want to hear about, um, about your book. So talk to me about, I know last time we, we mentioned it. So I want to hear kind of the details. Talk to me about the book. Oh my gosh. Okay. So the book came out um, a few years back and it's uh, how I got my life back. And it is a little bit of, you know, a few chapters on my story and then kind of getting into uh, the lifestyle changes that I made. Um, we did, Brianne and I, Brianne's the nutritionist, our nutritionist, and she and I put together the complete isodite cookbook, which is more um, uh, AIP focused. 
And then we have one coming out. Um, I'm going to actually put it up right now as soon as we get off. Uh, that's low histamine, low oxalate. And then I teamed up with um, a couple other doctors and then Brianne and myself, and we put together the complete IC basics course. And I'm talking about the course because it is the most up-to-date, comprehensive um, online IC course. It's phenomenal. And we covered, we got in and like the things that I was talking about that I learned with Dr. Amy Myers, we cover in there. And we've got a uh, health psychologist, Sula Wingenson and our nutritionist and our ND, Dr. Carly Akerson and um, uh, pelvic physical therapist, um, Amy Bach. And so we, we were able to bring this together. And I, and I love my book. Like I, <laughs> You know, it's not that labor of love. Um, I love my book, but we've also got the course out that just came out a couple months ago that is a really great resource for people who are struggling and looking for some direction on, on how to take all this information and then move through it. So that's yeah. fantastic. How does the course work? It's a, how long? It's an eight week online self-paced course. So yeah, just you can get in and move through it. And it's, we tried the best that we could to cover as much as we could without overwhelming people. Um, and uh, the, the girls that I partnered with are all phenomenal. They understand interstitial societies and, um, and they're, they're very relatable and sweet. So I thought that, yeah, it was, it was strategic in pulling people. It was, it's an amazing, amazing course. Um, I, and I, I kind of wrapped it up and felt like, okay, I've, I've put out as much as I, um, as I, I can at this point and at this stage to feel like I've given people enough information, enough resources to at least know how to build the right team. Cause that's part of the journey. Part of, part of the journey really is finding the right team of medical professionals to come around you, um, and help you like being a guinea pig the way that I did it is not the way that I recommend. <laughs> I'm like, look, if you can spare yourself, do it. <laughs> don't, don't go this way. Uh, so building the right team is, is huge. Um, and then just moving through each thing that, that, you know, each, um, we built it on six pillars of health and like moving through each one of those strategically and carefully, um, should be enough to bring to quiet down symptoms, reverse symptoms, and at least put you on the right path that you can become your own health advocate and, and take control of your health. Because if you're working with, you know, doctors who don't know how to help you, okay, can you go in and understand what you're asking for? What test do you want run? What are you looking for? Do you understand what you're doing if you're in a position where you don't have someone who's holding your hand and walking you down the road? I completely agree. It takes a village. It takes a village. Uh, I, someone asked a great question, which I hear all, all, all the time, and I completely agree. Um, the, it was the IC diet is very hard, and it, it does very individual, um, which is completely true. I mean, I'll let you speak on it first, and I can speak on it as well. Because we hear a lot about in the IC, in the IC Association, fantastic website a lot of great information and we, we you know we educate and we talk talk about the IC diet with patients but I, I agree it's very challenging sometimes for to follow because it's sometimes taking away their favorite things and then also um it is very individual so how, what, what was your experience it's very individualized um you know Brianne who's uh an integrative and functional nutritionist and a registered dietitian she she and I have gone over that what we call the traditional IC diet um, and studied it. And her takeaway was that um, it's not, it's not the, it's not the best. It's not the best diet to be on. And, and part of that is because there's pro-inflammatory foods on there, um, processed foods on there that Brianne's over here. Like, I don't care if you have IC or not. Nobody should be consuming <laughs> No process. Don't eat this stuff. <laughs> Right, but you don't you don't want that, and so um, she she helps patients with uh, finding the right elimination diet. But there's also this, you know, I mentioned like low histamine, low oxalate, but um, I think it's also re really important that 
we don't go too restrictive because Wait, that like creates its own stress, mm -hmm. right? Like if you're so focused on like cutting everything out, it puts you so like you're miserable. There's too much stress on you. You're now you're irritating your bladder even further when what you're trying to do is calm it down. And so if that's you, if, if you're in that spot where you're like, oh my gosh, this is too much. It's too much. Uh, the approach that I took was to eat clean. I kind of moved through it like that. It was like, okay, I'm going to kind of open up a little bit. And I, and again, I do have an issue with histamine. So I have to be careful um, that I'm not consuming too much of that. And I, I do take a supplement for it. Uh, but aside from that, just making sure that I was eating organic whole foods, um, nutrient dense foods, you know, I switched out my conventional dairy. I don't do dairy anymore. Um, but I do like nut milks or coconut or oat or something like that. And, uh, free range chicken. And, and I cook most of my own food. And, um, I think that I didn't, I didn't see it as restrictive. I think I saw it as, is this food that I'm consuming food? Is it nourish? Is it nourishing to my body? Can my body pull out the nutrients that it needs in order to function appropriately? And that is kind of where I began with my journey. Um, and then, but then of course, like we know that for some people, it's, it's not quite as simple as that. And so that's where like, you're, I mean, I love that you guys are wanting to get a nutritionist in there because it's so necessary, you know, in this journey for, for a lot of people. I, I, I completely agree. And I love how you said that eating clean and I completely agree with your approach, healing, healing the gut, you know, if you move all the talk, toxins, we do talk about that. What, what's your, you know, your surgeon, your soaps, and you're putting your soaps right where it's irritated. It's, it, it's all so connected. So it, that is kind of the first place to start is to kind of detox the house and then working on healing the gut. Right. And, and it is individual. So a lot of times it is clean eating, but I think also listening to your body because you can, it will tell you, uh, try something that's outside the realm that, that's stimulating your symptoms. So this yeah. listening and honestly being kind to yourself because so many of our our patients you know they're they you know you can be hard on yourself and, and it that's not do any anyone any good so overall i think being kind to it seems simple but just being kind to yourself it really does help that healing process oh my gosh that's so huge i love that you touched on that because there can be almost like self-hatred yes like, where you feel like your body betrayed you and you mm -hmm. hate it and you're like, it's broken. I want a new one. Like I, and that is not self love. And I, and you're right. Like making sure that we're loving our body. It's just sensitive. That's all. It's a little extra sensitive when it's, when you're in pain and you have those symptoms, it's just your body trying to say, Hey, hello, I need a little help. I'm not okay. That's it. And so if you can tune in, like you're saying, and like, listen, what is it trying to tell you and then give it that and i remember so one of the things on the diet i do want to touch on um because this is a question i get the most probably uh is can i eat because <laughs> you know you go restrictive for a little bit because you have to you can eat citrus or you know other stuff in there um once you get the inflammation down once you're addressing your root causes and you're calming your body back down and you're taking care of yourself your gut gets healed um your diet can open back up again and when i say that like i eat, i can eat anything i can eat grapefruit i can eat tomato i can eat chilies there's there's nothing here that i'm like oh i can't have that anymore but i'm also extremely careful in that i don't want to reintroduce pro-inflammatory foods that are going to undermine my health and disrupt the balance that I have going in my gut, which influences the balance going on in my bladder, which influences the balance going on in the vagina. So um, really wanting to, again, focus on nourishing and 
And part of that too, like aside from the food is the mindset. It's really being loving to your body and um, providing it with the tools that it needs to heal because it wants to heal itself. It just needs a little extra help to get there. To get there. Mm -hmm. Completely agree. Um, it's interesting. I so did your symptoms start around after your delivery of your, so was it a kind of like a postpartum? Subsequently, it, or I want to say within a within the year of having like within like she was a few months old and I started experiencing pelvic pain mm -hmm. and I went in and I went to doctors and, and you know they're just regular they're just you know what were you gonna at the ER right they're like checking me they're like yeah you look fine you can go home <laughs> well, ultrasounds normal I have no infection <laughs> we did an, we did an, an internal exam you look great go home and I'm like what just happened? <laughs> you know? Yes. If you, you know, we heard that story so often and we're tracking that data. We are trying to say, you know, we first meet you at the new patient consult, you know, were you put on opioids or have you gone to the emergency room for your symptoms? Um, and then later on, we're trying to see that you don't need the ER anymore. Right. Cause we're, just, we're trying to show that we're keeping patients out of the emergency room, honestly, because that is not a place where, Chronic pelvic pain, it's just not the ideal situation um, for chronic pelvic pain patients. It's, it's, it's tough because the workup's always normal and they're always just dismissed and kind of sent home. I know. It's so unfortunate. Alan. And, oh and hello? Oh, sorry. It was your cookbook. I'm a little bit. I'm like, wait. <laughs> yeah. Tell us the name of your cookbook. Um, so we have out the complete ice diet cookbook and then the one coming out should be up tonight is the 10 day icy reset, which is low histamine, low oxalate. And we, we brought in, you know, making sure that we're practicing self care into it and exercise and breath work and yoga for IC and just some, you know, a lot of different things, journaling, you know, trying to understand if you're going to do a reset, it's, it, it, it's more than food. You know, it's, it's getting the right foods, but also like calming down the body and yoga for IC is a great, um, there's some videos and stuff up on YouTube and there's some, you know, it's a great, it's a great help until they can get to a doctor, um, to get, you know, evaluated because even, you know, we see how, how it's so individualized and I, I do feel like, I don't know how you feel about this, but I do feel like I see is almost like this umbrella term. Um, and I would love to see it, some subtypes kind of, you know, become a little more, um, clear and acknowledged. And because I think that would be a huge help to the patient and the doctor, um, if we can kind of understand and not just put everybody under this, you know, category of, of IC, some people don't have any issues with their bladder, the bladder is kind of just this bystander in all of it. And then for some people it is, you know, it is the bladder along with, you know, other stuff going on in the pelvic region. So I would love to see that. And, um, just, uh, you know, when you, it's so individualized, like it's, and I know, you know, that as a doctor, like you're, you one from one patient to the next, if they both have IC, the treatment's not necessarily going to be the same the root causes aren't going to be the same. The diet needs aren't going to, not going to be the same. There's just so much there that it, it, it's not a, you know, a blanket across. It's not one pill. It's not one answer. It is very individualized. And that's why I feel like um, having the right team behind you is so important in this journey. Completely agree. And I love how you're saying root cause because that you're right. I mean, that is what we're, you know, at PRM, that that's really what we're trying to get at is the root cause. And, and we, we a lot of times describe them as predisposing factors, because quite often in this world, it's kind of like multi hit it's a couple things. A lot of times it's not one cause, but there might be a primary, you know, pre, a dominant one, but then two other two or three other things occurred that pushed patients over the edge, you know, so maybe so it's, it's usually multiple things, but we have to de delineate what they are and then address each one of them, whether it's, you know, whether it's a lifestyle or whether it's um, there may be some underlying kind of uh, uh, 
either uh, stress and tension or everyone's story is different. And then they had multiple guys in a row and then they also had a vaginal delivery. You know, quite often there's multiple things that come and your body kind of is hanging on, hanging on, and then just kind of gives out. And, and, yeah. but we, what it was and then reverse and rehab and do what we can to treat each individual kind of predisposing factor is how we describe it. Yeah, it's, it's brilliant. It's such a great way to help patients. It really is. It makes me so happy. <laughs> I just, I, the more resources, the more support we can give to people in the community. Gosh, I mean, that's the goal. I, and that's what everybody's kind of working towards is just, coming together and, and helping people because it's discouraging. It's, it's discouraging to be sick. It's discouraging to be in pain and feel like there's no hope and you don't know where to turn. And um, gosh, if, if I had known about you guys, <laughs> I mean, for me, I'm like, I would have flown out. Like I, <laughs> you get desperate, you know, you get desperate for wanting, for wanting answers and wanting help. And gosh, what a blessing you guys are. I'm, I'm so, so happy for what, for the, all the help that you guys are offering. It's incredible. Oh, thank you so much. And same to you. We, you know, we all appreciate everything you're putting out there and you're talking you know, it's, it just, it's in the course. I, that's very exciting. I would like, if you could comment how everyone could kind of find your course. And also I would like to um, know exactly how to find it. For patients. We can put it on our, our treatment protocol uh, as an option for our patients. It sounds absolutely fa fantastic. Oh my gosh. Thank you so much. Um, I see wellness.org. So I see, and then wellness.org and they, everything's there. Um, you can also get everything through our, all the links are there on social media on Instagram um, at, I, at IC wellness. So I mean, that would be incredible. I have you guys um, listed as referral. So when, so when patient or people contact me and they're like, hey, do you have anybody? I'm like, yes, yes, I do. <laughs> send, send them on over. I know exactly where I'm sending you. You're in good hands. Um, and, I, and I love that. It's just so, so phenomenal. Like just, I, I, I don't know if you can, can understand what I'm saying. Like, I know you hear me, but it's like, when you've been sick, when you've been sick, when you've been suffering. And some of these people that are listening right now are suffering. Um, it's just, it's just like joy. Like that's all I can explain is like joy. When I, when I get to come across people who are in this and helping, it's, oh my gosh, incredible. No, it's, it, and thank you for sharing your journey. It, does, it helps us as Practitioner, practitioners to really have patients like you telling people, this is what worked for me. This is what didn't. This was my journey to healing. And it is a process because it is challenging for us to kind of get patients to understand that you're right. There is no magic pill. I can't give you one pill and you'll be fine. And, and it, it work with us, you know, so we can have you, we can rehabilitate your, your nerves, your muscles, particularly um, that the bladder sits on and that innervate the bladder. Um, but it, you know, they just sometimes takes time. So, and it's a bit of a yeah. process. So that when you put your, your story out there, it makes our, you know, our life so much easier because it, it, you, you detail it and the understanding and, and what you went through to really get to the other side. And it's just, it's, it's amazing. Really. I love it's, it's the best. I, we, this is the best story. I love it. Thank you so much. Yeah. I, it is a process and I, and I think people really need to accept that I think you you do it's you you kind of give yourself a leg up I don't know if that's the right way to say it but like if you can accept that that it is a process resisting that and saying like no I I'm not I I want this quick fix <laughs> that that mindset sets us back it is just a process it is what it is I think that you know, it's an investment. We have to invest into our health to get better. Oh my gosh, it's worth it. And, you know, part of the reason we, we put out the course is wanting, wanting to provide that information. Um, but I think that the truth is it, it is going to take an investment into your health, but you're worth it. You're worth it. And, and if you can look ahead and you can say, okay, I'm not going to stay here. I'm going to get better. Oh, 
what is that worth to me? Oh my gosh. Like you don't realize until your health is stripped away. Like you don't, you don't, until it's gone, you don't understand how valuable it is. And so, you know, I know that there are a lot of people that come through and they they have monetary restraints. And so my advice to them is always, if that's your situation, you are still worth it. And so one thing at a time, one thing at a time, move through the process one step at a time. You don't have to come out the gate doing everything all at once. If you cannot afford it, there's still hope here for people. Um, one thing at a time, you know, go to this doctor and, and let's work on this first. Okay. Now we're going to go to the next doctor. Now we're going to order the next test. Now we're going to, you know, change out and, and make a switch over here with the food or this, you know, change out the products that you can. You don't have to throw everything away all in one day if you can't afford to replace it all. So just, you know, moving through the best that you are able to do, understanding that every step is a step in the right direction. You're going down that path. It is a path. Keep going, keep moving. Um, and, and refusing to, to give up until you get to where you want to be and, and be okay with that process. Wow. That's amazing. Yes. I, <laughs> I completely, completely agree with you. It's well stated and Thank you. Thank you for being, you know, an inspiration to, to all of us and our particularly, you know, our people who are suffering with IC and bladder pain syndrome. Um, you know, it's not easy living with it. So, it, and that there is hope you can start, get on the other side and start to feel better and regain your life. Um, but that's amazing. Amazing. So is there anything else you want to say to everybody or before we No, I thank you so much for having me on. Oh my gosh, what what a privilege uh, it is to even spend time with you. And um, no, I think that's it. Other than I think it's really important for people to know that I see can be dealt with, you know, it, it symptoms can be reversed. I think that's really important. And I have to remind people of that a lot. Listen, there's hope here. There's hope. You, it can, it, you can deal with it. There's hope. Don't give up. And um, I think that's a good place to leave it because I think that should, you know, it's something for people to hold on to, to know that this isn't forever. This is no longer, I see is no longer a life sentence, um, which is <laughs> incredible. It's, I agree. I agree. This Exactly right. There is hope. There are specialists, and there and go through the process. And um, yeah, that's 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 amazing. Amazing. Thank you for all you do, Elizabeth. This is just fantastic. And I will make sure we spread the word to all our patients um, for you know everything you have going on. And I just love to see you know passion, raising awareness for for this disease process and for pelvic pain and. It's, I'm grateful for all you do, and thank you. This is really great. Thanks for spending time with me and chatting about everything, and um, you're, you're doing amazing work. So are you. Thank you so much for having me on, for talking with me, and thank you for um, just being in this, in this field and for helping so many patients get their lives back. Um, it's just you're, it's, what you're doing and everything is just an enormous blessing, so thank you so much. Yeah, thank you. Well, this was great, everybody. And thanks for joining us. Um, and we'll see you all soon.